Hi, this is a quick little video that I put together um, showing the Famicom disk system that I picked up recently that wasn't working. Um, basically just ended up taking it apart and placing the belt, put it all back together again and well, see the result later on. Um, when I'm recording this video I've taken all the screws out first so I don't have to <laughs> bother recording. Uh, taking out screws because that can be a bit boring. Um, so the first thing you do is take the top panel off. Um, and there's six screws underneath before you uh, can take that off. Um, and what you need to do is get the main disk drive, which is a big metal bit in the middle there, out. But to do that first, you need to take off the battery compartment <clears throat> by taking off the, uh, the I think that's the negative wire. It's a bit difficult as you can see, it's a bit fiddly. But uh, just make sure you move all the wires to the side and let them snag, and you should be fine. Um, that PCB underneath the battery compartment is actually plugged in to the disk drive, which again, as you can see, is already taken out. Um, make life easier in the video. Um, and you also need to take out the front bezel uh, sort of surround. Of the, the disk drive, and the disk goes in. Um, then to get the disk drive out itself, there's four screws holding it in. Um, so what we need to do is undo those four, and then uh, lift it out. And as you can see, I've already taken the screws out, and the uh, bottom panel is is uh, it's dropped off as well. So, um, so. What you need to do is just lift up this uh, big metal disk drive carefully as you can, make sure there's no wire snagging, and then you can just put the, uh, put the case into one side. And you can uh, start working on the actual disk drive itself. And we've just got the disk drive free from the, uh, from the the casing, and there's four screws holding the bottom plate onto the drive. Again, I've taken all the screws out, um, so you just take that off and move that to one side, and you should see underneath that there is a PCB and some cogs and what looks like an elastic band so the person that I had this before I had it uh, tried replacing the uh, Famicom disc belt with an elastic band which obviously doesn't work so if you're thinking about replacing the uh, drive band don't replace it with an elastic band it just doesn't work you need the proper bands which I think I purchased off of um, eBay for about two or three pounds um, as you can see, the old black um, band, some of it's still on there, which is probably why uh, one of the reasons why it doesn't work with the elastic band currently. Um, you can probably just make out the existing uh, band. It basically just cakes itself to the uh, cogs and, and the drive um, motors and uh, causes problems. You need to give it a proper clean, uh, which is what I'm going to do in a second. As you can see, I've removed the metal um, compartment which sits over the cogs, and I've also removed uh, one of the cogs with it. Um, again, this isn't a detailed overview of what I did, it's just a, a brief summary after I'd actually taken the thing apart. There are better videos than this on, on YouTube, I just thought I'd put um, my experience of what I did to get this thing working again. Um, as you can see, you've got the old belt uh, that horrible black stuff it's almost like tar um, I think this was made in 1985 so you can uh, see how long that belt's been there for it's, it's basically just disintegrated and snapped at some point and stuck to the cogs which is why uh, it doesn't work after uh, 20 or so years but basically you just scrape all of that crap off um, before you can even think about replacing the, uh, the elastic band which was already on there or the, the existing belt
Okay, right, half an hour of cleaning and we've got pretty much 99% of the old rubber belt off of it now. Uh, you can see it's completely clean around the big cog and the small um, gold or brass um, spindle which is connected to the motor is uh, clean of any existing rubber as well. Um, I would suggest not using anything sharp to clean the plastic one otherwise you can, you can put nicks into it which can cause problems. I just use some earbuds with some um, rubbing alcohol and it seems to, to clean it up well. As you can see it just looks like plasticine, it's, it's horrible stuff. And you may need to make sure there's nothing, none of that anywhere else as well because it can cause uh, problems. Okay, new drive belt uh, back on. Um, it connects up to the motor spindle and then goes underneath the PCB and the metal contraption that's on top of it uh, that holds the cogs in place. Um, like I say, there's other videos that show how to do this. This is just a quick uh, run through of what I did. There's no remnants of the old belt on there now, so it should spin nicely uh, when everything's back together again. Uh, you do have to do a bit of calibration. Again, I've not included that in this video. Um, check other videos around the net and you should be able to see how to calibrate one of these things. Here's the uh, quick look at the band that I bought off of uh, eBay. Um, you need one of these, uh, an elastic band, which just won't cut it. All put back together again. Um, I would suggest testing it before you do that, or you, you end up putting all the screws back in, because you don't want to have to undo them again if you have to do any more calibrating. Um, but see my next bid, and I should be able to show you uh, show you the system working.